legitical response. And every Democrat voted against it, putting billions in new taxes on energy. Isn't that something to celebrate? Mail saying, hey, we want to talk to you about your taxes from five years ago. Haven't heard one person in America saying that they want to pay more money for gasoline. Non-financial challenges may constrain the pace. This bill breaks President Biden's promise because they're ramming it through. A real world deployment relative to model results. It increases the deficit. In fact, they have a multi-billion dollar new tax on energy. So you'll be paying not only more for gasoline, but you'll be paying more for utility bills in your household, which are already skyrocketing. Okay, well here's part two. Uh, this is actually the guts of the Inflation Reduction Act. There's a lot to cover here, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right on into... 87,000 IRS agents. You think of just about any NFL stadium in America filled completely with new IRS agents. That That's right, more than doubling the size of the IRS to go after lower income people. Now, I'm sure just about everybody's heard about these 87,000 IRS agents because most of these news channels ain't shutting up about it. They're going on and on and on about it. I had some clips I was going to throw in, but there's really no need because, like I said, I'm sure most people have heard this from somewhere or somebody. But I thought it was odd. I've heard people saying it's making the IRS bigger than the Pentagon. Getting back to the point, well, when I started looking this up, it's not really true that's like a cap on how many people but the thing is i found a i found a pretty good rebuttal to that and a very rational explanation i couldn't confirm it because obviously i can't get personal information on the government employees of the irs but this guy rationalizes it very well and articulates it a lot better than i can so i'm gonna let him run with it here we go another 80,000 plus staffers over 10 years. Does the IRS really need that many? Is Well, I'm not sure how they came up with the 80,000 number. Uh, between now and 2031, when the bill <coughs> expires and the funding expires, anywhere from 35,000 to as many as 50,000 employees will retire because they're eligible to retire. So a lot of them, they'll all have to be replaced. But in terms of the growth of the IRS, I always thought that if I could get back the 20,000 that I <laughs> lost while I was there, uh, that would be a major step forward. And they love saying on the other side, don't worry, it's not gonna touch them. There's only one problem, it doesn't stand up to the facts. There was an amendment in the Senate, right here, very simple, one page amendment to protect people making under $400,000 from new audits by the IRS. This amendment was voted down on a party line vote because they want that army of 87,000 IRS agents going after lower income people. And And in fact, the smoking gun came out this morning. They don't have a full CBO report on this bill. You heard the old adage, you got to pass the bill to find out what's in it. That's what they're doing today. That's why they're rushing this bill through today. It doesn't even have a review from the Congressional Budget Office. But just a few hours ago, we got this. And it was a confirmation that the IRS agents will be getting about 20 billion dollars in new taxes from people making less than four hundred thousand dollars that's right the cbo just confirmed it a few hours ago roughly 124 billion dollars is expected to come from increased irs enforcement possibly meaning tougher and more frequent audits for americans you may have noticed that those two numbers that they just spit out were different and they were majorly different they're a good bit of ways away from each other. That means somebody's lying. So President Biden, who made that promise multiple times, if you make under $400,000, do not worry. Your taxes don't go up. It's confirmed by the CBO, and there was an amendment to stop it from happening. They wouldn't allow us to bring that amendment here on the floor. Well, there you go. You can form your own opinions on that one. I have mine. Moving right along. This bill is the most significant and consequential step that Congress and the president could take on the fiscal policy side. It's, it's a small step. It reflects 
where our country is, which is nearly paralyzed. This was a straight party vote in both houses. It makes some steps forward on containing uh, drug prices, some modest steps. It takes some steps forward on climate, which is uh, somewhat amazing, but they're not large steps. There's no overarching plan. And uh, there are some tax credits that are offered for the right things for turning to green energy. First up, the new law is very focused on clean and sustainable energy. It includes $80 billion in rebates to help households pay for green energy upgrades. Subsidies cover home improvements like efficient heat pumps, electric water heaters, and electric cooktops. To try to reduce price pressures in the economy while also providing consumers with some direct relief. It will make everyday items that people need to upgrade their homes or to commute to work, make them more affordable uh, by providing tax credits and rebates to them. It Notice he says to make everyday items people need to upgrade their homes. Really? That doesn't make much sense, dude. How many people do you know that spend money on everyday items upgrading their home? I don't know anybody that does that on a daily basis. But what he should have said is, if you don't have an electric heat pump or solar panels, you get a rebate. And guess who pays for that rebate? You do, through taxes. So how is that even a rebate? The bill doesn't do anything to lower costs on everyday items at all. That was a blatant lie. The stuff it does help like as far as prescriptions, that's only people that need those specific prescriptions, which my statistic that I looked up is about 13 million Americans. That's only a couple of percent. I don't really see how that helps. But all these headlines are a big exaggeration. It says reduce uh, the emissions by 40%. Well, the study that uh, that uh, proposes that shows that even without the legislation, the emissions go down in that model by 27%. So what's coming out of this legislation is much smaller than the headline. And then if you read the fine print, which I have to do for a living and I, I have it in front of me, it, it says that now that's a, a lot of jargon to say uh, there's probably exaggerated what's being claimed for this because you need a plan, not just some tax credits. Where are you going to put the solar fields, the wind uh, towers? Where are the transmission lines? All the policy side is gone because mansion blocks the policy side on climate change. We don't have a, a functioning uh, policy plan for this country. So yes, it's progress. It's definitely progress, but it's small. And if it becomes, well, you've already done that, then we're going to be disappointed mm. down the road as, as usual. Let's talk yep. about the impact on prices. Um, Democrats probably got this bill passed because in part they called it the Inflation Reduction Act. Is that just a marketing tool or will it have an impact on prices coming down? <laughs> Completely marketing tool. <laughs> this is uh, th that was a, a title that seemed to work better than build back better. <laughs> and so they they went with that. But the inflation we're experiencing now is not addressed at all in this legislation. I mean, let's talk about in practice what this bill will do. It will lower health care premiums for 13 million Americans starting here in just uh, a couple of months. I just remembered where I got that statistic from. It will lower the cost of prescription drug prices to end consumers, but also to the federal government. And it will lower the federal deficit. That's Those are the things that this bill will do. So it seems like basically what he's saying is this bill isn't going to do anything for the vast majority of Americans. It's not going to help with inflation. It's not going to help with energy costs unless you have some kind of sustainable solar or wind energy, which most people don't. It's only going to help a few people out with prescription drugs, and that's about it. So what is this bill really going to do? There was a whole lot more to this that could have made the video, but it wasn't all that interesting. It's quite boring, and I'm not trying to make boring videos. I'm trying to make something at least a little bit entertaining while being informative. 
and hopefully given a different perspective. So I left a couple of minor things out, but overall, this bill was way overhyped. It's not really doing anything good. If anything, it's gonna make things a little bit worse because it only increases our spending. It says it lowers the deficit, but come on, we all know that the government hasn't lowered the deficit in a really long time. And as a matter of fact, Trump got close to it, but then we had COVID, so it blew that way out of the water. COVID really screwed us up, and they're not really doing anything that seems like it's going to help. But don't fret. We'll make it. We'll get through this. We'll come out of it a little bit stronger than we were before we went into it. So, to everybody that's still watching, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. You know, hit that subscribe button for me. Do all the good stuffs. You know, punch the like button. As a matter of fact, maybe we can do something like play Thumb War with the like button. That would be awesome. Let's make that video happen. Rational person breaks the thumb of the like button. I'd watch it.